it is your environment, but you're probably going to have to fight for it. Bob Irwin has joined forces with a group of locals who are trying to stop the state government from removing all problem crocs in the far north. The North Queensland Crocodile Protection Society says people who aggravate the reptiles should be fined. Bob Irwin met with members of the North Queensland Crocodile Protection Society for the first time this morning. These young Australians will, will, will be able to talk much, much better than I can to other young Australians. Bob is also offering support to the group, which was launched earlier this week, and they've signed up to join his animal coalition. It is calling for a total ban on hunting and culling of more than 50 endangered and vulnerable species ahead of the federal election. More than 25 of the country's largest wildlife groups have signed up, including Sea Shepherd, Animals Australia, RSPCA Queensland and Earth Race. For us, it's a, a, a massive privilege to have Bob invite us into his coalition um, and to have his support on what we're trying to do. Locals banded together after a trap was set for Mo, a well-known salty in the Mowbray River near Port Douglas. Yesterday, the Environment Minister said he would consider leaving it alone if people who have been feeding it did the same. The people who are feeding it, the people provoking the crocodile to be noticed as aggressive, um, these are the people that should be responded to, like find them, you know, punish these people, not the crocodile. The Protection Society has set up its own website. It can be found at nqcrocodileprotectionsociety.webs.com. Trent Evans, 7 News. Well, issue an invitation to the private sector to manage the reptiles. There's apparently more than one way to catch a crocodile. A small barb is thrust under the skin of the crocodile, and then it's played a little bit like a fish and... Uh, and then you put a top to a rope over it. Sounds pretty easy, it's not quite that easy. It's called harpooning. Then the animal's pulled into the boat. And it survives? It survives, yeah. Crocs are smart, and if they're not trapped the first time, they're unlikely to be caught in the same way. It was one of the many things discussed during the first meeting of the state government's so-called croc squad. Unlike the Northern Territory, we don't have an 80 kilometre zone that we need to look at. We've got 1,100 kilometres of coastline with a lot more densely populated areas than Darwin. That includes opening the removal of problem salties to private companies. Private enterprise can always do things uh, at, at a lot cheaper rate than what uh, government uh, departments can. Wildlife warrior Bob Irwin says he has concerns about some of the people giving advice to the croc squad. I make no secret of the fact that, that, that I don't like crocodile farms and I don't I don't like any type of activity that um, uses native wildlife just for greed and just for profit. If we don't build our economy's growth on using our native plants and animals, then we're going to build our economy's growth on using introduced plants and animals. And I think that's not as, uh, as responsible. Trent Evans, 7 News. What concerns Bob Irwin and I about this crocodile management plan is that where Bob made it very clear that he supported the removal of dangerous crocodiles in boat ramps and on beaches. Uh, what they've done now is a total backflip. Uh, not only did Andrew Powell recently called my good mate Bob Irwin a liar, well now he's in a backflip on what he pledged to Bob. Now he's going to put the uh, removal of crocodiles in the hands of private operators and it's up to them on how they disperse them. So you can guarantee that 99.99% will end up as a handbag or a shoe somewhere in France. It is your environment, but you're probably going to have to fight for it.